Welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. So, Mark, what do we got this week? This week, Rory, I'm going to show you Smart Duplicate Line. Okay. And the shortcut for that is Shift plus Enter. And, nice uh, and simple. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice feature. It allows you to create new code based on the current line of code that you're on. Um, so, for example, here I'm on normal is equal to zero. I'm going to just hit Shift Enter here. And now I'm down to this next line here, and I can just write in my new state here, like uh, minimize, for example. Hit Enter. Yep. I'm in a field. That orange box around the word I'm typing in it means I'm in a field. If I hit Enter, it'll take me to the next place, and I'll just type in a one. So okay. when the first time I did it, it just essentially duplicated the line. It gave me normal equals zero. It also did something kind of magical that I didn't really point out. Uh, it added a comma right up here. It knew I was yeah. in an e enum. And not only did it duplicate the line, but it modified the line I was on. Um, nice. But so it looks already a little bit smart. And you might be thinking, wow, Mark, that must be the extent of the intelligence. That's, that's pretty. That's clearly the smartness. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, and I would reply to you, uh, hold your horses, my friend. We're not done. So uh, let me hit it again right here. So I'm going to now hit uh, shift enter again on this line and watch. It'll add a comma for me automatically. Uh, I'll uh. change this now to uh, maximize like that. I'll hit enter and look at this. It, it, right. it, it didn't copy the one or the zero for that matter. Right. It gave me a two instead. So let's just continue hitting that. I'm just going to hit shift enter again. And uh, now I can type in uh, uh, something new here. And notice what's happening here. It's just incrementing all the way up here. And, yeah. um, and once I'm done with that, I can just move on to another location in the code. I wanted to show you here. Here I've got a, a constant declaration here. Uh, uh, unknown, I'm just going to hit, again, I'm going to hit shift enter on this. And we're going to change this to uh, checked is one of the states right here. I'm going to hit enter. Sure. I'm going to come over here, change that to a two. So it changed. So that's rather clever right there. It's not picked up on the whole of the value for changing. It's somehow recognized the type of the value it does as a hex representation. And it, it, I guess it knows that you're going to enter another hex number. And so it's only giving you a field around the O2 portion of that. Yes, exactly. They're doing exactly that. In fact, let's go back one so that you can see that. I'm just going to copy that to clipboard, save me some time when I go back down here, paste it in like that. And exactly, look at what they've done. When I come in there and hit enter, they're suggesting I just change this. And so now I can change it to an O2, sure. for example, like that. Let's do one more time here. And we're going to come in here and call this flipped. And at this point, you'll be like saying, OK, I get it. It's kind of adding one to each one of these. I saw it happen yeah. before when we did the enum. Let me change this to a four. And we'll do it one more time and watch this. Yeah, nice. Right? So there you go. So we'll just call this, like, for example, pushed. Come over here and notice now it has clued in now that we are duplicating each time. When I do it one more time, it again doubles the number up right there and uh, allows me to now, continue very quickly. For those who maybe think that that's wrong, that is double. This is, remember, a hex representation. So that character, that one, represents 16. Exactly. And zero units. So that is technically correct. Exactly. And so we can just continue all the way along uh, these lines. I'll do it one more time. I'll just call this disabled one. And there you can see the doubling that's occurring fact, all the way through. Arguably, Code Rush is helping us even more than we expect here. Because if you weren't aware of that, if you had somehow just allowed your mind to wander and you thought that double eight would be 16, a one and a six, because you were hoping to just shift the bits up. This is, after all, a hex figure you'd be entering bad code at that point. But yeah. Code Rush has picked up on what the real pattern is here, the actually identifiable pattern, and is actually preventing you from making that potential mistake. Yeah. Also, I want to point out, notice to go from uh, 0x80 zero zero to double it, uh, Code Rush adds another digit for you and selects all those pieces nice. there. All right, so next, let's come down into, your, into my color settings class down here. And you can see I started to write some code here. I'm just going to grab Alice Blue here um, for now. And, uh, and then I'm going to click on it. And we're, this is going to bring up the color picker. Uh, I'm actually going to switch the color up a little bit. I kind of want a teal color here. And I'm going to grab something up like around this color, like that. And now I'm going to duplicate the line. OK, so we're, we got, we're here. Now, initially duplicating, Codrus is like, well, we think you might be wanting to change the type along those lines. I don't, so I'm just going to hit Enter. And then it's going to say, well, you probably want to change the name. I'm just going to simply change this from Shade 1 to Shade 2. I'm going to hit enter. Sure. 
uh, I'm not going to change this call either. Okay, but what I and I'm just going to hit enter through all these. But now I'm going to go click it again, and I'm going to go in. And here's where we were, right? I'm just going to move yep. it about that far in that direction, and I'm going to click yep. OK. And so now you can see the color swatch is changing there. And now I'm going to come down here and hit duplicate line, duplicate line, duplicate line, duplicate line, and wow. check out what I've done. I've got even shadings of colors all the way down here. That's nice. So you've kind of given a vector from the first shade to the second shade exactly and it's extending that same vector with each step but it's altering all three points at the same time exactly and so as a result you get this even distribution of shades uh incredibly easy right to build these Very right nice. all the way down there all right we'll come down over here we just want to show continue to show this here's some another constants i've got uh add item i'm going to change this to uh delete item like that i'm going to come uh -huh. over here increment this to by one and then we're going to do it again, and we're going to call this one a modify item. And now I want to show you what's happening here. Just keep going down here. It's now grabbing just the parts that are changing, right, yeah. in each one. So I'm just typing the piece that I want to change in each one. Everything else is taken care of for me automatically. So we really are talking about smart duplicate line. It, it's taking pieces of it, leaving them exactly the same because it's spotting the fact that you are leaving them the same. It's taking other pieces and incrementing them, following the pattern that you've established in previous items. And it's taking other portions and breaking them in half and seeing that parts of them stay the same, like the, the various items here, but parts of them are changing. So giving you the opportunity to specify the new, the cut item, the copy item, the duplicate item, and indeed any other number of items that you might be about to add. Right, now one of the things you might be inferring by now is you might be realizing wait a second, smart duplicate line not only looks at the line of code you're on, but it's got to be looking somewhere else as well to figure out what to do. So for example, remember when we were here, we duplicated the line, we went to a two, we did it again and it suggested a three. But then once we changed that to a four, right, and we duplicated the line, it went and gave us an eight right? It didn't give yeah. us, now it could have, it, and the reason it got to eight is because it looked not only back one, but back two and saw sure. that I was doubling. Had I instead, let me show you one other thing. Let's say we delete all of this. Let's change that to a zero. Now look what I'm doing. I'm not doubling. I'm incrementing by two. Adding two. So yeah. now if we do it, watch what happens, right? We come in here and uh, and it goes up by two. So it knows to increment by that value. So smart duplicate line looks not only back one line, but at least back two lines to figure out what is happening. Okay, sure. so now I'm down in here and, and you might be wondering, you know, wait, okay, so I can do this on enums and I can do this on field declarations and constant declarations, uh -huh. but can I do this on regular code? And the answer is yes, you can. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna create a point 3D class really quickly. I'm gonna start by using a template for an auto implemented property of type integer, AI like that. And I'm gonna just type in yep. X. Then I'm gonna immediately hit smart duplicate line key, which is shift enter. And now I'm gonna type in Y. Then I'm gonna hit shift enter again and type in Z. And that's it right there. So I've got X, Y, and Z. Very, very quickly nice. to create that class. Then I'm going to come yep. down in here and I'm going to use a template called FRI, which just gives me a for loop using the variable I as a default. And I want to, I want to create a method that fills up a buffer with the uh, specified color ranging from 1.3D to another 0.3D. And that's what I want to sure. do in between those two locations. And so my I is going to stop at the stop point dot. Uh, uh, we'll go through, iterate through X first like that. We'll say it's going to start at uh, start dot x like that, and we'll change the variable to an x. So we've just written this line of code. We haven't used smart duplicate line in here yet, okay? Yeah. In fact, actually, I want to change this to, I, I want to actually include up to the stop point. So I'm starting at that point and ending at that point. And then I'm just yep. going to use smart duplicate line on here. And then I'm going to come in here and hit the letter y. And notice what it does here. Even though this is a lower oh. lowercase y here, it's found the other y, the other x, and it's changed it to an uppercase. It saw that this was uppercase there, so I'm going to change that to an uppercase as well. Sure. Right? And now I'm done. That's quite the inference, yeah. And now I'm going to do it one more time, and I'm going to change this to z, right? And now I've got it, right? I've got 
the code I need. And now all I need to do is add that final line of code in there, which is going to be buffer of uh, x comma y comma z uh, and set that whoops and uh, set that equal to the color like that. Nice. And that's all I need to do to write that code that's structurally similar, right? Each one of these is similar to the line above mm -hmm. and to write that code very, very quickly. And that is smart duplicate line. That is fantastic, Mark. Well, thank you very much. I guess we'll see you next week on Code Rush Feature of the Week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.